Hello folks. In this video, we're going to take a look at convolution and impulse modeling in SampleWrench. You can do a lot of very interesting things with these functions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call up, big surprise, our city of the future. Give this a quick listen. What about the job displacement market? in this city of the future. Alrighty. Now, what we're going to do is essentially pass this sound through an impulse response. Now, an impulse response occurs in all manner of circuits and acoustic systems. You pass a signal through it. In other words, it alters the amplitude of the waveform in time. This could be a simple filter you know, like a high-pass, low-pass filter. It could be something much, much more complicated, uh, like the acoustic signature of a particular room. So you can use these functions, the, the convolution and the impulse modeling, uh, to do things like normal EQ, but you can also use it to sort of put a sound into an acoustic environment. In other words, you could record something dry and then sort of place it inside you know, a music hall or a basement or your shower, you know, something like that that has a certain acoustic sound signature to it that you want. All right, how do we do that? So we, we have our sound. Um, the first thing I'm going to do here is take a look at the convolution. Convolution is sort of a, the simpler of the two, and it's designed really for small little impulse responses, maybe something that's, oh... 50 sample points long, something like that, right? So a typical filter would be, would be uh, an example. Now, I have already have a bunch of sounds loaded, and uh, some of these are impulses. So I, I happen to have in here a low-pass filter already loaded. So I'm going to use that as the impulse response. All right, so you, you can see the, the note here, 1 kilohertz first-order filter. Okay, so it's low pass. It's going to allow the low frequencies and it's going to get rid of things above one kilohertz. So that's basically turning the trouble down. All right, give this a listen. What about the job displacement market in this city of the future? All right, so that definitely turned down the trouble a little bit. Let's undo that. What about the job displacement market in this city of the future? It also happened to increase the gain, which very often will happen. And I'll show you a nice way of sort of adjusting for that, because sometimes the gain can be so large, it looks like you're going to go into some very, very severe clipping. All right, now if you're curious, you know, what did that thing actually look like? Okay, this is the response. This is all it is. It's just this short little sort of hump. And this is what would happen if you pass the sound, you know, an electrical signal, an impulse, just a simple impulse, which would just be, you know, nothing, 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 and then a spike, nothing, 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 nothing. If you pass that in, this is what happens to it, sort of smears it in time. And that's this effect of a low-pass filter. All right? Okay. There's other things we can do, though. Now, moving on to the impulse modeling, I'm going to use some longer uh, impulses here. So, for example, I am going to call up uh, this um, impulse, this one second impulse. So this has this first large impulse, which is going to be essentially the sound itself, and then this trail of little spikes, which represent maybe little reflections in a room. So this is going to give us a little bit of a uh, sort of a reverb kind of characteristic. Okay. So let's go over here, and we're going to grab um, our impulse modeling. Now you can see we have the same list, but there's optional processing that we can do. So, for example, we can reverse the impulse, we can fade it out, there's a stereo link, we can ignore um, certain parts of it, you know, maybe the very beginning or the end of it, things like this, shift it in time. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep this straight up, we're just going to grab this one. And notice, by the way, you can just grab an external file. It doesn't have to be loaded in a, in a wave editor. I'm doing it this way because it's just very easy for us. 
we can flip around and see the names and everything. Okay, so let's run this. Now, we can see this has been changed. Let's give it a listen. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Right, so there's definitely some reverberation going on there, right? I'll bring it back. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? And redo it. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Okay, and back to the original. Now, where do you get the impulse from? Right, you could sort of manufacture these mathematically, but an easy way to do this is to create your, your own by recording them. So I'm gonna give you a real quick example of this. Um, literally went into my garage, right? So it's, you know, concrete, kind of bare. I just clapped my hands. I had a little handheld recorder, a little digital recorder. I just clapped my hands. And this is the impulse that I got. I trimmed off the very beginning of it, but this is basically what I got out of it. All right, that's it. Just a little hand clap. Now, ideally, you would want a perfect impulse here, but this is sort of good enough to play with. So I'm going to convolve, uh, excuse me, I'm going to use the impulse modeling on this. Um, and we should now have the sound this, this vocalization as if it was played in the garage, as if you re recorded it in the garage. So I'm going to select that one, the garage impulse. Boom. Now notice this appears to be horribly clipped. This is an important point. It is in fact not clipped. Remember sample wrench uses a floating point 32-bit floating point representation, it only sort of clips this to the window. In fact, the data is still there. You can bring it back in just by coming into the level control here and just maximize it. So this will find the peak and bring it down to 100%. Boom, there's your waveform. So let's give it a listen. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Right, and we definitely have that reverb. Okay, getting back to our original sound, all right? You can, conv you can um, combine this. I shouldn't use the word combine. You, you can uh, run the impulse modeling on this with all kinds of weird sounds. There's nothing that says you have to use, you know, a sort of a traditional impulse. Um, you can do something else. So for example, I have loaded in here um, a little snippet of a flute. So this is just a few cycles of a flute. If you just listen to this, you're not going to hear much of anything. You're just going to hear a little blip. Um, but this is, in fact, you know, like I said, a few cycles of a flute sound. And I'm going to convolve this, um, impulse model this with the flute. You could do either one. The flute's short enough. But again, the impulse modeling um, is much more efficient on longer sounds, and you have some optional processing. So we'll just do that. And what it's going to do is it's not going to sound like you're playing a flute and this vo vocalization at the same time. It's, it's like the vocal is passing through the flute. All right, we're a little over scaled, so we'll do our same little trick with the maximize and give it a listen. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? You know, so it has it has a weird kind of resonant quality to it, which is what it's getting from the flute. Okay, now, how far can we take this? Well, let's open up a different sound. Um, I also have a little piano passage here. Let me shrink him down. All right, so this is something we've we've listened to before. I'll just give this a quick. All right, so just a little cluster of notes there on the piano. We can do the same kinds of things we did before. You know, we can turn around and say, 
oh, let's add one of the, you know, reverb type things. I'll use that one, one second impulse. Get a little reverb effect in there. Okay. Uh, anything we did before we can do with, with this sound, but just to, sh just to show you, okay, let's try, let's try that, um, little flute thing that we had. What does that do? You know, that's, that's sort of, um, resonant quality. Got a little bit of overscaling here. So we'll do a maximize, give it a play. Now, so there's, there's that same sort of weird resonant kind of quality again. All right, now, let us go back to our city of the future, and I'm going to call up another sound. I have uh, just a little short snippet, about a second long, of um, a picked bass guitar string, just so you can hear it. All right, that's it, just a little bang. Now, I'm going to use this as the impulse on my sound, on my, on my uh, vocalization here, right? So, what about the job displacement market in this city of the future? So we're going to do the bass is the impulse model on the voice. What do you think that's going to sound like? I'm going to fade this out. This will uh, make it a little bit less blurry. I mean, this is a second long, so that can really sort of blur things in time. So I'm going to fade this out. Wow, this is huge, right? This is way overscaled. And this, this happens when you have big uh, impulse responses. So once again, we'll do our little trick over here with Maximize. Now let's give this a, a listen. I'll play it again. That phrase is still in there, right? In the, in the city of the future. What about the jobless placement market in the city of the future? So it's not a bass guitar, it's not the voice, it's some weird combination of the two that you can't get by just mixing those two things together. It's like the voice is passing through the bass guitar, right? Kind of a interesting sort of quality. So you can imagine, you could record a lion and use that as your input. You can manipulate the, uh, the impulse response. So... You could use any of the functions that we've already seen. You know, you could EQ the impulse response. You could use, uh, you know, uh, any kind of analysis on there, any sort of, um, you know, envelope control, anything that we've done, you can manipulate the impulse response and then apply that to the sound. So what you can wind up with, who knows? It's really only limited by your imagination.